We've mentioned functions that are going to work for strings no matter how long those strings are. The main limitation we had with the only model of computing we've discussed so far, which is this circuit-based model of computing, the key limitation for that was that all of our inputs had to be a specific size per implementation. So we could not, for instance, compute this infinite XOR where we said, are there an odd number of ones in this string where the string is whatever length you care for it to be? We could only do like XOR of exactly eight bits per one implementation. If I wanted to do XOR for nine, I've got to come up with an entirely new implementation of that XOR function. So Boolean circuits, they have this drawback of you have to have a fixed number of inputs per implementation. What we really want, though, is I want to be able to do something like this infinite XOR, but that means that I need a new model of computing that's essentially going to take infinitely many inputs, one of any infinite number of inputs. So we no longer want to have finite functions. Finite functions are those where there's a finite domain. The domain of that function is a finite set. We want to have infinite functions where the domain is an infinite set, meaning any one of infinitely many inputs could be used as the input for this model of computing. So that's sort of the next step that we're going to take. We're going to move beyond these Boolean circuits and end up with a model of computing that we can use to do some of the functions that we had discussed. So an example of one of these infinite functions is this infinite XOR where what we're going to do is I want to define an XOR that can take any unbounded number of input bits. So this XOR that can take any unbounded number of input bits. So we can take any string of ones or zeros as input, and we're going to produce a zero or one as output. We can think about this as a decision problem or a language. Because it is a function that returns just 0 or 1, we can also think about it as the decision problem. Are there an odd number of 1s? Or the language, all the strings with an odd number of 1s. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to have some model of computing where we can do functions like this. Where we have any number of input bits that you want to hand me, that same implementation is going to be able to give me the right answer for all of them. With programming languages, they allow us to do this sort of thing. You write one program, and that program's going to work no matter how big the input was that you gave it. Like, you could write a program that took as input maybe a string or a list or something like that. You could write programs in your programming language that would compute some function for any list of any length. And the way that programming languages manage this is they add loops. Loops, 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 loops. So loops in programming languages, those are the things that allow you to do this behavior, that allow you to do infinite functions. So the idea for how it is that we actually do infinite functions is we just add some sort of mechanism for repeating things over and over and over again, where the model does not itself limit the number of times that can happen. And the way that we're going to represent this in hardware is we're going to use some idea called an automaton. The plural in this case is automata. Basically, the way that these work, they're kind of like hardware where you've got some sort of state that you're in. So maybe you've got a register in your memory or some small amount of memory or something. And there is some contents of that memory. We're going to call that the state of the memory. So you've got some sort of state of your memory. And then over here, you've got some finite function. And what we're going to do is this finite function is just going to update the state over and over and over again. So this is basically the way that this is going to work. We're just going to say the loop that we're going to add is we have state and we have one finite function that can transform that state over and over and over again until something happens that tells us to stop. So this is how we're going to be able to do these infinite functions. Because we're going to say that, that we can repeat this any number of times, we're not going to bound the number of times this could repeat. That's going to allow us to, for instance, do this iteration more times for longer inputs, and that's going to be the thing that allows us to start to do some of these finite functions, just like loops do in our programming language. I'm going to start by sort of at a high level describing one example of an automaton that we could use in order to compute these infinite functions. This kind of automaton, we're going to call that a finite state automaton. So we're going to talk about what are the components of that, so what does an implementation look like, and also what does an execution look like. 
So just like with any of our models of computing, we need to give rules for what an implementation looks like and how you execute that implementation. We're going to have these two components here. First of all, let's talk about the definition here. Let's talk about the, the vocab. So this is called a finite state automaton. The reason this is called a finite state is because that memory that we had that would have some sort of state to it, there are only going to be a finite number of options. So there's a finite number of options for kind of the status that our program could have, the state our program could be in. Depending on the input, so for different inputs, we're going to differently change the state as we kind of read through our inputs. So different inputs will cause us to update that state differently among those finitely many options is the idea here. So the components of a finite state automaton. First of all, we're going to define a set of states, a finite set of states. The variable name we're going to give to that is capital Q when we see it later. So we're going to have some finite number of states where one of the states among that finite number of states we're going to call the start state. We typically denote that as Q sub zero, and that needs to be an element of a set of all of our finitely many states. We identify one of the states as our special start state, the state that our execution is in before we ever do anything. We're also going to have a subset of the states that we call the final states. So whether or not a state is final is essentially going to tell us how to give an answer. And then we're also going to have our transitions, the rules for how we go from one state to a different state. So this is going to be that finite function that we have, this, this, uh, these transitions, where basically it's a function where I hand it the state that our program is currently in, and I give it a character in the input, and it tells us what the next state ought to be. The way that the execution works for one of these automata, so we begin in that state that was the initial state, that was that start state, and then we're going to take our input, whatever input was given to this machine, and we're essentially just going to have a for loop for this string. We're going to say for each of the characters in this string, we're going to read them once, no looking back. And for each of those characters, we're going to use our transitions to go into some new state once per character. So using the current state that we're in plus the current character of the input in that for loop, we're just going to pick some new state. And we're just going to do this over and over and over again until eventually, once we've read through the entire character, we're going to give some output depending on what state we're in. So if that state belongs to f, then that means that the answer should be equal to 1. Otherwise, the answer is going to be equal to 0. So we're going to be computing one of these Boolean functions, some Boolean function, and the way we're going to do that is we one character at a time read any string that you hand to me, and using that string in the current state of our system, we pick some new state. And then once I've done that for all of the input characters, I say, was I in a final state versus was I in a non-final state, and that tells me whether the answer should be 1 or 0. Yeah. If it's an element of f, then the answer is 1, otherwise the answer is 0. 